Well, it is good to be blessed. That's better than saying, well, it ain't going too good. Or what are we going to do? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'll try to get you out of here in about 25 minutes so you can run home if you're interested in watching the debate. I already got it, I already got it recorded so I can, I can back up and miss all the... You know, well, they don't do any commercials during the debate, do they? So anyway, I, I won't miss anything. So anybody going to watch that when you get home? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's praying for the nation. God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven and I'll, hear, I'll heal their land. I believe God wants to heal some things. Uh, healing and God go together. Did you know that, by the way? Uh, I said healing and God go together. Prayer and healing go together. Uh, and uh, a lot of, lot of stuff. That's not my message tonight, but... Um, but let's, uh, let's look at a couple of places. If you've got your Bibles, uh, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8 real fast. We'll look at a text that we've been using for Wednesday nights. And then we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 8, uh, verse 10. Actually, you might not even have to turn there. You already know what Nehemiah eight ten says. The joy of the Lord is our strength. How many like to be strong? Well, if you're going to be strong, now, now joy... Is a spiritual force. So if you're going to be strong in the Lord, you know, uh, I like I was I was just reading this morning. I think it's uh, I think it's Psalm 89. Let me see. I think that's it. Listen to this verse, Psalm 89. Is that where I was looking at? Let's see if that's what I was. Yeah, uh, Psalm 89. Listen to this now, verse 15. Says how bl- I don't have that. This is, I was just thinking. I just read this this morning. How blessed are the people who know the joyful sound? Or oh Lord, they walk in the light of your countenance. You know, there's something about joy that'll keep you in in a, in a receptive condition. Being joyful. If you're depressed and sad, you, you're not going to receive anything from God. God doesn't dwell in a joyless environment. So you got to you got to be up. Everybody say got to be up. You got to keep yourself up. You got to stay in stay uh, in the joy. Um, because that's just, that's, that's the way the Father likes it. So how blessed are the people who know the joyful sound, or you could say that, the call to worship. Amen? And, uh, oh Lord, they walk in the light of your countenance. Verse 16, in thy name they rejoice how often? All the day. Everybody say all day. Can you rejoice in the Lord all day? Well, how often is all day? That'd be 24-7, right? Listen to that. He said, in thy name they rejoice all the day, and by thy righteousness they are exalted. Now watch this. For thou art the glory of their strength, and thy favor, and, and, and by thy favor our horn, the horn represents authority, is exalted. But notice that, verse 17. Thou art the glory of their strength. The glory. Uh, you need to know that when you're, when you're happy and you're joyful, there's a strength connected to that. And the devil wants to steal your joy. Because if he can steal your joy... Uh, or if he can steal anything that, anything that, that belongs to God or that God's given you and the blessings, or uh, the devil wants to steal it. He wants to steal the Word from you. Because the Word produces joy. Jesus said, these things I've written to you that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be made full. And uh, he said, you know, in that day, over in John 16, he said, in that day you'll ask me nothing, but whatever you ask the Father, in my name he'll give it to you that your joy might be made full. So, uh, you know, there's just something about the Word. And so if the devil can steal the Word, then he's, then he's going to steal joy. And if he's stealing the joy, he's stealing our strength. And again, Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we're talking about, we've been talking for several Wednesday nights on the subject of faith and joy. Everybody say faith and joy. So let's just thank Him. Lord, we just thank You tonight for understanding, helping us. Right now, Holy Spirit, we look to You. You're the teacher. Hallelujah. And we thank you for revelation knowledge. We thank you for quickening us. Hallelujah. That we're learning and we're growing and helping us to grow in this faith life, uh, live in the faith life. And so we thank you for the word tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody say faith and joy. You know, we're talking about faith and joy. Uh, If you show me somebody uh, with some uh, joy, I'll show you somebody with some faith. Show me somebody with some faith, I'll show you somebody with some joy. All right? Someone with some joy is going to be a strong person. I mean, no, Paul was a strong person. Think about that. We'll talk about Paul here in just a minute, but, but just think about faith and, 
and joy and, and, and you know, when we're walking according to the Word, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we are to walk by faith, not by sight. We know all the verses. The New Testament says the righteous shall live by faith. Romans, Galatians, Hebrews says the righteous shall live by faith. So uh, Hebrews eleven six 6 says without faith it's impossible to please God. So, so we're supposed to be uh, using our faith. And so one of the things that's going to be connected to faith is our joy. So think about it like this. Uh, would it, 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 how would it affect your life if you... Uh, you know, your prayer life, if you believed you received. I mean, if, if, you, if you prayed and you believed you received, uh, you believed you received, how, how, you think that would affect you in, a, in, a, in some way or condition? You think that would affect how your face looks? If you believed you received? Or even your countenance? Well, if you believed you received, whatever you prayed for, you'd probably be happy, wouldn't you? <laughs> you'd be glad. I didn't say you saw it. I said you believed you received. But see, a lot of people had, hadn't got it yet, and so they're still kind of staying kind of down because they haven't seen what they're praying for and believing God and trying to figure out if God heard them or not instead of what? Believing they received, and they're getting happy. Hallelujah, because they believe they received. So you have to keep in mind sorrow and sadness is not faith, and it's going to destroy you. And if you're, uh, if you're waiting on a, on, on a sight to decide if you're going to believe or not or to get happy about it, you may be waiting a long time. Because uh, we're supposed to believe we receive. And, uh, and remember, you, you can't praise God and be discouraged at the same time. That, that's the that's interesting thing about sometimes just checking out people, you know, watching people. I've been pastoring for 24 years now. I've been in youth ministry since 83. So long, I'm over 30, I don't know, 35 years, something like that, that I've been around church life and in the ministry and areas. And, and you see people in, in their condition um, based on how they look coming in, you know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, are they coming in, like Paul said, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord, and people coming in glad and, and happy, or, 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 and, then it, and then it spills on over into their praise life. Well, you know, things ain't going too good at home, and so, you know, it just kind of carries on over into the praise, and so they're, really, they're kind of discouraged, so they really don't praise God like they should. And, and you really can't, have, you really can't uh, express a good praise life and be discouraged. You, that's why the Bible says God's given us the, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You have to put it on. You have to put that praise on. And, it, and that's not going to be based on how you feel. And, and really, uh, that's going to happen more at home than it is at church. Because uh, uh, your faith is not tested at church. Your faith is tested in the crunch. I ain't talking about Captain Crunch either. I'm talking about when you get in a financial crunch or you get in a, you, you get in a crunch, you know, maybe a literal car crunch or something. I don't know, situations that, that just happen and, and, and you've you got to do like, like James, count it all joy. And he didn't say because you feel like it. He said you count it all joy and uh, you get your praise on and that will, that will affect your life, all right? And so, uh, you, you know, again, uh, in Nehemiah 8.10, he, he said don't grieve, don't sorrow anymore. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you make a mistake or if you missed it, you got to get up <clears throat> and thank God for the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> and God doesn't want you wallowing around and having a bad witness. Walking around being discouraged and disappointed and sad and, and uh, you know, just that, that's not a good witness. I said that's not a good witness. The life that God has given us is to be a life of joy. And, and so and because He wants us to live a life of joy... Uh, that's the kind of life he's designed for us. He's going to give us instructions in his word. Everybody say instructions. So you can just think about the word. Go to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Uh, we have instructions. Instructions from, from people like the Apostle Paul who knew how to rejoice. How many know Paul knew how to rejoice? <laughs> how many of you think that if you were... Now, how many know prisons today aren't really as good as prisons back in the day? Let's say in Paul's day. Uh, how many know today prisons have air conditioning? TV, some padded beds. How many know Paul, back in Paul, I've actually been in, Don and I had a chance, I was ministering back in Rome years ago, and we actually got to go visit a few sites, and it was a real fast trip. We took a train, went to Rome, and we were walking and going, and we actually got to walk and see where the place where they say where the prison, where, where Paul was in Rome. And it's just a, you go down, down in there, and, and it's just like a, cir a circle or circular room, and nothing but rock. And uh, a little bitty hole up in the top. 
And they say uh, at a certain point, because of the because of the, the drainage and the sewage, you know, that kind of, I mean, no, they, don't, they didn't have like drain, you know, some of the sewage and stuff would just kind of go in that hole. You know, certain times and drain and stuff would just run in there, you know. Anyway, but uh, interesting place, and it's, it's just a hole. But, uh, but Paul, even though, I mean, he wrote a lot of the New Testament from prison, and uh, we see some examples in his life, even some of the instructions that he gave, Philippians 4.4, you know it. Philippians 4.4, Paul writing, uh, the, the church at Philippi, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So think about that. You think Paul was a hypocrite? No, Paul wasn't, <laughs> Paul wasn't a hypocrite. If he's, if he's telling people to rejoice, I guarantee you he was rejoicing too. As a matter of fact, he said it over and over. Actually, in this book, many times, I think 16, 17 times, he uses the word joy and rejoicing and, and I joy and I rejo- I'm, I'm thinking about you. And, uh, but uh, the interesting thing, Weymouth's translation, I like Weymouth, it says, always be glad in the Lord. Always be glad. Always, everybody say always. Always be glad in the Lord, and I repeat it, be glad. Now, is this possible? Can you be glad? Can you always be glad? <laughs> always? Now, see, some people might want to argue with you on that. Well, Pastor, but you don't know what kind of situation that I've been in and, and, and how can you be glad in that. Uh, Paul is writing from a jail cell. It's not nice. It's, it's not a fun place. And he's saying, be glad no matter what's going on. And I really am excited about this message tonight because this, man, you start digging into, some, into what faith really is and, and, and what it looks like. This changes your life. This changes how you live on a daily basis. And it doesn't matter what's going on. And you have to, you'll check. I, I'm constantly uh, checking myself. I'm going, uh-oh, you, you're not in faith right here. Bracken, you are not in faith right here. You're frustrated or you're, you're feeling discouraged a little bit. And you need, you need to get rid of that right now. You need to start praising God or, or looking at the promises. Uh, remember, uh, while you're here, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says rejoice always. 1 Thessalonians 5.16. So Paul here in Philippians 4.4, 4, he says, be glad always. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice always. Hallelujah. I think I said it you know, a while back. We kind of touched on this. But, but what if uh, Jesus was standing right in front of you and said, I want you to rejoice always. Glory, I want you to, no matter what happens, I want you to rejoice. No matter what's going on, I want you to be glad. Well, what would you do? <laughs> Well, this is basically, uh, the word is the inspired. It's inspired of God. And he's saying, he's saying you know, you, you're going to have to do it all the time. Rejoice all the time. And so if he's telling us, think about it. If he's telling us to rejoice, it must be a choice. And he certainly wouldn't say, do it all the time because he would know. I mean, Paul's talking about, you know, hey, uh, he, he would know the conditions and, and certain opportunities we would have to not rejoice. But he's saying, hey, you can do this. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're talking about somebody that had some strength. Paul was a strong man because Paul knew how to rejoice. All right? Hallelujah. So uh, what I want you to get tonight, and you'll hear, uh, this is what kept coming up. Rejoicing is a choice. Being glad is a choice. Expressing, just deciding, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in joy right here. That is a choice. And rejoicing and joy, they go together. Because really, the best way to tap in is you go ahead and start rejoicing. You can begin to praise God. Like you said, put on the garment of praise. So it's a choice. And it's not about your circumstances or your feelings. You have lots of wonderful opportunities to not rejoice. I mean, something happens or something's going on. But, but what, what you need to keep in mind, the, the characteristic of a carnal Christian is that they're feeling dominated. I said the characteristic... Of a carnal Christian. How many know what a Remember Paul writing to the Corinthian church? He said, I wanted to, I wanted to get, you know, I, I fed you some milk. I wanted to give you some meat. But he said, but I couldn't. He said, you're carnal. And he said, you're in strife and envy. And there's division among you. I was thinking about that, you know, today. Because, uh, because strife and division will set you back. It, it'll put you in a place where, where it's just not good. So you need to make sure you keep that stuff out. But, but a characteristic of a carnal Christian is that they're just feeling dominated. They're feeling ruled. All right? I mean, if you know, you think of uh, uh, in the natural, how I many little kids are just children? Kids, I mean, from the time they're born 
uh, especially when they're born. I mean, they're just, everything's about feelings. It's how they feel. They cry when they're hungry, uh, you know, as they keep growing up. Everything's about feelings. Even as they get older, well, I don't, I don't feel good. Well, I feel this and I feel that. And, and uh, just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean it's true and it doesn't mean it's right. You understand? Uh, think about, if you, you have to understand, the, battle, the Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against Ephesians 6, principalities, powers, rulers, you know, so forth. And he said uh, we have to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. But then there in Ephesians 6, he says, you know, uh, we've got to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Well, those darts are coming right here. So you have to understand that devil knows that we're uh, the natural makeup of a person. Uh, we, have, we have five senses, you know, sight, smell, taste, touch, so forth, hearing. So, but, but we can be very uh, feeling ruled if we're not careful. If we don't take the word of God and, uh, and be word ruled versus feeling ruled. Because what happens is, you have to know this, the enemy knows that if I can get you thinking on something, what I can get you thinking on is going gonna, is gonna to carry over into how you feel. In marriages, let me just, let me kind of take this direction. Because, uh, and, and, and it goes both ways, men and women. But, but you have to catch yourself, well, why I, why I feel like, why I feel like you don't really, you don't really uh, listen to me. Well, I feel like, you don't care about me. Oh, I feel like you don't do this. And I feel like, well, I feel like you don't, well, I feel like this. And, and what are you talking about? You're talking about a feeling. So the devil knows, well, if I can put this thought in you and make you feel, and it may not even be true, but if I can make you think it's true and you start saying, well, I feel this and I feel like you don't do this and I feel like you, well, I feel this way. Well, it might not be true. Your feelings could be very wrong. And the enemy knows that. And then, and then based on how you're feeling, that's why they have songs. Feeling. Nothing more than feeling. And I did it my way because I felt that was the best way. Well, if it, you know, if it feels good, that's, you know, it's all right. Well, not necessarily, no. All right, you know, so you got the picture? So if you're led by feelings and you're dominated, uh, what happens is, if you don't conquer that, you'll, be, you'll stay unstable all your life. Unstable. You cannot allow feelings to dictate and dominate, rule you, or allow that to, you're supposed to be word. In other words, you take the word, and you say, no, this is what the word says, this is what I choose to believe, I'm going to get in joy. And this is what the word says. Well, so what if they you know, if, if you need to work some communications out or different things, you talk those things out, you walk in love, and, and anyway, but, but again, it's, Feelings, people start trying to communicate that. So you have to learn to discern your feelings. All right, I've got to move on right here. But, but again, rejoicing is a choice. And you can choose to rejoice right in the middle of crying, right, right in the middle of the worst circumstances. And I know what I'm talking about. I've been there before. Matter of fact, one of my, the one I, I, you've heard me talk about it. We were in a situation, God called us to go to Ramah. We had three kids. Donna's already, uh, actually she was pregnant with Ben. We had two children. She's pregnant with Ben, got to Ramah. Loaded a U-Haul, moved there, didn't have a job yet. Only knew one couple in the whole city of Tulsa, broken air put together. And, uh, no, you know, and, and you just li limited in little money of what we had. And what we had, we'd put, we tried to get a house that we were trying to get, and that got tied up, didn't work out. So, we were, so actually the money that we had, that we, put, we were waiting for it to come back, and it came back in two chunks. One month, and then the next month, we got that, and it's just crazy. But I remember sitting on the couch one day thinking, this, it, this is, I mean, just, this is, it, this is just, Crazy. And I just, I just had to laugh. It was so bad. Because I knew I was in the will of God. I, we're doing what the Lord told us to do. But, you know, the refrigerator, and, and you need a refrigerator, and you need money, and you, need, you, you, know, you don't have a job yet. No, I mean, it's just, it's just one, one endless uh, bad feeling after another. You, you, it, you didn't feel good. And, uh, but right in the middle of it, you just laugh. And you go, God, you're, you're the source here. We're, we're doing what you called us to do. All right? But, but really, I'm talking about how to be spiritual and have miracles right in the midst of some difficult circumstances. You've got to learn to rejoice. You've got to get happy. Because if you stay down and you're sad and you're depressed and, and dragging, uh, you, you're not going to get the breakthrough. You're not going to be able to move forward like you need to. Uh, think about a couple of things, and, and then we'll go. Look at uh, Matthew 10. Remember uh, Matthew 10? Because people... 
see, the enemy's going to work on people. Matthew 10, I'll just read it. It says, blessed are those, verse 10, Matthew 5, I'm sorry, Matthew 5, verse 10. says, blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you. Now, does that make you feel good? Somebody's insulting you. Somebody's persecuting you. You know, as a pastor for 25 years, you, you're going to make somebody upset. And, and people are going to talk about you. And I've had people talk about me. And I've had people make rumors and say stuff. And you know what? I could get all bent out of shape about it. And I could get all down about it. But you know what? But what did Jesus say to do about it? He said, now listen, falsely say all kinds of evil against you. And he said, because of me. And sometimes that's just the enemy working overtime. He said, rejoice and be glad. You know, he didn't say, because you're going to feel like it. Because I, 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 I don't know about you, but if, but if somebody's making up stuff about you, or they're saying ugly things about you, first thing you want to do is just go get right in the middle of it and straighten them out. <laughs> right? He said, rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, and for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, making sure the right people like you. There's some people that won't like you, but that's all right. If they don't, they might be the wrong people. <laughs> all right? Luke says, leap for joy, by the way. That's the way Luke said to do it. Leap for joy. Uh, think about this, and we talked about this a few weeks ago. Uh, you're responsible for looking at who you are, not what somebody else says about you. That's why it's so important that you have a foundation of who you are in Christ. Knowing, uh, you know, knowing what God says about you. And if you let what people say rob you of your joy and peace, then you're going to let the devil win. You let the devil win, all right? Now, think about what, gee, here's another one, Luke 10, 20. Luke 10, 20, Jesus was, was talking to the disciples. They came back and they were talking about, Lord, even the demons are subject to us and casting out devils and so forth. And he said, verse 20, Luke 10, 20, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but notice, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. They're recorded. See, rejoicing is a choice. And... Uh, Jesus is saying, don't rejoice over that, but rejoice over this. It's important that you know what to rejoice about. We're to focus our mind on the right things and what the Word has to say. And remember, there's plenty of reasons, uh, or plenty of good reasons to rejoice all the time. Plenty of good things to rejoice about. We just tend to focus on the wrong thing. Or sometimes even it might be a good thing, but Jesus said, no, don't rejoice over this. Rejoice over this. Your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Your, your names are recorded in heaven. All right? And so you have to make up your mind, nothing's going to steal your joy. Nothing's going to steal your joy. All right? Check up on life by taking a look at how much you're rejoicing. How often are we supposed to rejoice? All the time. All the time. Doctor says, well, you've got this such and such medical condition. What do we do? Hashtag TTR. Anybody remember that? Hashtag time to rejoice. Hashtag TTR. Remember? When you're in the rich, something happens, something comes up, you unexpected. TTR. Time to rejoice. Time to rejoice. Why, how can you rejoice even if you get a, uh, you know, something bad, have something physical you're dealing with? Well, because I have a healer. And there's nothing too difficult for him. Nothing's too hard for him. And when you rejoice in the midst of it, that's staying in the light. Remember? He talked about those who know the joyful sound, they walk in the light and so forth. And he's their strength. And so always keep in mind what others are grumbling and fussing about. You can find a reason to rejoice. And that's something we do all day long. Give thanks. Rejoice. Now we were talking about, uh, did I leave you in Philippians? Or I took you over to Matthew. Go back to Philippians. Go to the first chapter. Just a couple things, and man, my time's running out. Uh, Philippians, the first chapter. Uh, I was talking about Paul a while ago. And look at, look at, uh, look at what he said here, because we were talking about him being in prison and his attitude. Philippians 1, 14 says, And that most of the brethren, trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment, have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear, some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife, but some also from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel. Verse 17. The former proclaim it out of selfish ambition rather than from pure motives, thinking to cause me distress in my imprisonment. Now, do you think Paul could have got offended about that? 
think Paul could have lost his joy about that? I mean, uh, you know, Paul even was so close to what God had given him, he called it my gospel. Uh, but, but he had... He loved the Word of God so much, and, and he's talking about people that are preaching it out of, for a good, good heart and right heart. And he said, you got some people, they're preaching it for wrong motives just to cause me trouble. Well, that, you're already in jail. And then now you're hearing about people that are trying to cause you trouble. They're preaching the gospel just to, just to try to get you in trouble. How many think Paul could have got upset about that? He could have thought, well, I'll wait till I get out of here. I'll find you. Right? But I like this, I like this phrase. I, I really, this kind of jumped out at me. What did Paul say? Verse 18. What then? <laughs> Everybody say, what then? <laughs> what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this, I think I'll get over it one of these days. Now, what did he say? And in this, I rejoice. I rejoice. And he said, yes, and I will rejoice. Because what? It's a choice. Paul said, I got lots of wonderful opportunities here. I can get offended. I can get mad. I can be down because I'm in this prison here and, and I've been given my life and I'm, I've been beaten and, and all this stuff going. And here I am and, 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 and people still trying to get me in trouble. Make my life, make life hard. And he says, but I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. And he said, yes, I will rejoice. I like that scripture in Habakkuk chapter 3 where he said, though there's no fig on the vine and, and no ox in the stall. And he said, it, in other words, as far as what things look like, he said, it doesn't look good. But he said, but yet I will rejoice. I will rejoice. See, so it's not about your circumstances uh, that determine whether or not you can rejoice real good or not. And we know we're supposed to do it all day long. So again, Paul, he's strong because he's rejoicing. Think about how much better is this kind of lifestyle versus sitting there and being depressed. I mean, come, come on. If you, if you put yourself in Paul, Paul's shoes, I mean, I don't know. He, I might want to get depressed for a little bit. I might like, oh, man. Because <laughs> we have a bad morning, you know, and we're like, oh, man, day's rotten. All right, I'm, I'm glad you're getting something here. Go to James. All right, this one, this one's going to get you right here. If you ain't shouting, this will get you shouting right here. This will help somebody right here. Because it's easy to shout. It's easy to rejoice when everything's good, isn't it? But now watch this. See, it doesn't matter who you are as a believer, what kind of condition you're in. The Word instructs us, if you're going to live this faith life, you need to rejoice. You need, you, need, you need to crank that joy up. So James said it like this in verse 9. Look at this. James chapter 1 verse 9. He said, but, but the brother of humble circumstance is to glory. The word to glory means to rejoice. King James says rejoice. New American Standard is glory. So to glory, that's why First uh, Peter said, uh, though you haven't seen him, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's a, there's a rejoicing going forth. But he said it like this. But the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position. Did you catch that? The brother of humble circumstances, in other words, he's in a rough situation. He might even be Poe. You know what Poe is? That's where I was. I was sitting on the couch. I had two kids and one on the way and no money in the bank and no job and the refrigerator that wasn't even freezing ice and, and Poe. <laughs> Getting me some, got to go to Raymond, got to wear a suit and tie. Every day, or actually, I don't think we had, yeah, I think we do. Yeah, we had to wear a tie back then. I mean, kids, they got it easy today. They had to wear, so I had to go to Walmart and find me some ties. <laughs> anyway, watch this. But the brother of humble circumstances to glory rejoice in his high position. Do you have a high position? Come on now. Watch this. And the rich man is to glory to rejoice in his humiliation. What does that mean? Because... His riches aren't in, in, it's not who he is. That's not his God. So it doesn't matter what you have. He says, let the rich man glory in his humiliation because like flower and grass, he'll pass away too. So in other words, if you're poor, what are you supposed to do? Rejoice. Why? Because you're coming up. <laughs> Amen. Rich, same thing. Rejoice. Not because you're going down. 
but, but you got a higher place. Hallelujah. So no matter what's going on, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> You're supposed to get some joy. No matter what's happening, right? Going up, going down, you rejoice. Hallelujah. And, and if you get this, uh, that'll, make you, that'll make you hard for the devil to whip. It, it's going to be difficult for the devil to mess with you. Amen. And this is not being unrealistic, like some people might think. This is just the choice to live by faith. And this is what God arrested me a while back. You know, it's just, and, and I've actually learned this a long time ago um, because I understood you get a, a revelation of just what faith is, that you cannot be depressed and in faith at the same time. And this will just help you stay right here. Just, you're, not, you're not like the, the Christian that's just up and down, up and down. Feeling. And situa- you have situations. Did you ever notice in the Word, this is interesting, did you ever notice, there's all, it's all through the Word. It kind of shocked me the other day. I was like, yeah, look at that. I mean, I didn't realize how much it is in the Word. But the Word comes, then comes affliction. The Word comes, then comes affliction. The Word comes, why? Because the devil's always trying to steal the Word. The Word is the parable of the sower. Satan comes to steal the seed of the Word. When the, and the ones that throw in, the, you know, receive it with joy, but then in test and trial and affliction, then they, they throw the, they, 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 they quit and they give up. And in Hebrew says, you, after you were enlightened, you received, uh, you know, you, you, with, in the trouble and the tribulation, uh, you rejoiced. Another one, uh, even you rejoiced at the, at the taking away of the spoiling of your goods. You still were rejoicing. It's amazing. So you always, you know, just because something start, hard starts going on, you might be thinking, did I just recently get something in the Word? Did God just really show me something and the enemy's trying to steal it? Because he's trying to steal your joy. Hallelujah. Let's clo- uh, let me close here. I think this is, yeah, let's go to John 14. We'll wrap this up real fast. Let me give you one more. John 14. We're talking about uh, a choice. The choice. Say it's a choice. To rejoice. Hallelujah. Last passage here. John 14. Remember Jesus. Four, John 14, 15, 16. This is really like the last. Jesus is wrapping things up with his disciples. It's kind of a last little you know, hurrah there, and he's instructing them with some things. And in verse 4, he's really telling them, hey, I'm fixing to go, fellas. I'm, we're checking out of here. Remember, he, he's going to tell them, I'm going to heaven. And Philip's going to say, well, well, Lord, you know, what, where are you going to go? And he said, we want to go with you. We're going to go with you. And they said, Jesus is like, no, you can't, come, you can't come where I'm going. And, 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 you know, he has a little discussion with Philip. But look at verse 1. Notice he says, let not your heart be troubled. So no matter, so in other words, they're, they're, uh, they're a little fearful. Jesus is telling them he's fixing to go. What are we supposed to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And he says, don't let your heart be troubled. Number one, don't let your heart be troubled. And then watch, he's going to give them something to establish their life. He says, if, he says, believe in God, believe also in me. Now watch this. In the midst of their fear, he's going to give them instruction. In the midst of him telling them he's going to go, and they're going to be sad, and they're going to be down, a little fearful, because what are we going to do? He says, believe in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. He didn't say mobile homes, aren't you glad? If it were not so, he said, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you might be also. What's he doing? He's telling them, listen, I'm giving you something to think about. I want you to go ahead and just start rejoicing in that mansion right now. How many of you can rejoice in the mansion right now? You don't have to wait until you get there. You can start rejoicing about it right now. In other words, really just saying in any situation, you can make it in any situation. Hallelujah. And he's telling them what to do right in the midst of their feelings, right in the midst of their feelings of fear. He's going to be leaving. And, and he says, if you, if you believe, then you'll rejoice. Now watch this. Go down to the 27th verse. We'll just wrap this up. He said, now notice what he said. He's still, this is all in the same context here. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. In other words, I'm leaving. He said, but don't worry. I'm gonna, my peace, I'm going to leave it with you. And he says, not as the world gives, give I unto you. He said, let not your, again, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. That's big. That's real important. He says, you, now watch this. He said, you've heard how I said unto you, I go away. So he hasn't deviated. This, this whole context of what he's talking about is I'm going. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, so forth. He says, I'm going to go away and I'm going to come again unto you. And now notice what he says here. This is, this is interesting. He said, if you love me, what? You do what? <laughs> you see that? He said, if you love me, what, you go, what would you do? 
He said, you would rejoice. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto Father and my Father is greater than all. I don't know, there's something about that. He said, if you love me, you'd rejoice. In other words, if you don't rejoice, it's because you hadn't decided to believe what I just said. Because that's what believing does. Believing is believing. I would say, well, Pastor, I'm, be- I'm believing. We're just believing. Well, you need to get that look off your face if you, believe, if you really believe it. Mary Hart does good like a medicine. And, and so he's, he's saying, if, if you believe that, you'll rejoice. Number one, he's talking about heaven's real. He says, I'm going somewhere, and I'm going to take care of some stuff. I'm going to get your house taken care of. I'm going to get your mansion fixed up. So go ahead and just start rejoicing about that right now. This is just temporary right here. Remember we talked about Paul, talking about light affliction oh, a few weeks ago. We were talking about light affliction. In other words, if you believe it, you'll rejoice even in the, even in the face of death. Ain't nothing to worry about. Paul said, live as Christ, to die as gain. Ain't nothing. I'm just going to rejoice while I'm here. We're just going to glory. We're going to rejoice. We're going to have a big time. And he just said, and if you love me, you would rejoice. You can't can't whip a joyful believer. You you can't keep them down. Uh, Children of God, when we understand who we are, we rejoice. This this is just temporary right here. And Jesus said, hey, you know, I'm fixing to leave. I'm going to go take care of some stuff. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to give you peace. And he said, and you can have a joy that the world didn't give you. He said, and the world can't take it away. Can't take that joy away. He said, but if you love me, he said, if you love me, you believe what I said, you love me, he said, you'd rejoice. Oh, there's something about that. If you love me, you would rejoice. (laughs) Did you get anything tonight? Let's stand up and let's just uh, be happy before we go tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for the word. We thank you, hallelujah, that you've given us instruction on how to live a faith life. Hallelujah. What the faith, we're just, we're just seeing from all different angles what this faith life really looks like. And Lord, we see that it's a life of rejoicing. It's a life of gladness. It's a life of believing what you said. Hallelujah. And if we believe what you said, it's just hard to stay depressed about it. Hallelujah. So we just thank you tonight for the word. We thank you that, that healing's available to us, Lord, that we just declare that we're strong in the Lord. Hallelujah, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and it's a, it's a real force. Heaven's a real place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Our names are recorded in heaven. Hallelujah. We belong, hallelujah, to the great God. Our Father is greater than all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're related. Hallelujah. We've been adopted. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, help us to take these things and and just meditate on them. Hallelujah. And realize that it doesn't matter what's going on. We just choose to rejoice. We choose to rejoice. Just say that out loud. I choose to rejoice. Nothing's going to get me down. I choose to rejoice. I choose to be strong. And rejoice and be glad. Put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let heaviness in. I'm going to stay happy. Glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Did you learn something tonight? Well, if you love Him, that, that'll, that'll stick with you, right? If you love Him, what you going to do? <laughs> rejoice. Well, uh, High five somebody before you go out of here tonight. I'll let you go. Turn you loose. Went a few minutes over. But you're dismissed. Have a blessed evening, everybody.